The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. What up, everybody? This is Relatable Radio. <laughs> <laughs> And, and this is Takeover Night, where it's always men's night. <laughs> we got a sausage party up in here. <laughs> what up, guys? How you doing? No, it's relatable radio. Like, oh, I'm doing great. Like, this is great. Yo, this intro sounds weird to right? me. It's totally yeah. different. Yeah. Odd. It's, it's very odd. cool. See, it's, it's, diff- it's less weird for me because I hear them all as it happens. But for you guys, I wanted to do Takeover Week. As just like this fun thing, because we we've all been doing so good with our shows and everything. Yeah, but I just wanted to like kind of spice a it up a little bit. Up. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I'm down with it because some people only listen to certain shows, you know. So yeah. this might be a, a different intro to other shows that we just kind of sprang on them. There we go. So we're the guys from Might Be News. If you guys don't listen to Might Be News, we are. Might be news, but this the founding is, show. Yeah, this is relatable radio, where it is always ladies' night. <laughs> <laughs> so, Can you do that again? <laughs> where it is always ladies' night. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple guests here. Uh, <laughs> my brother John from Might Be Brews is here. What's up, everybody? My brother Nathan is also here. What's up, Nathan? Hey, what's up, guys? He's in town uh, from New York. We're going to the uh, the the car show, auto show, whatever. Nice, yeah. Because uh, in our time space continuum, the weekend hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> um, so relatable radio always starts off asking, uh, "What do you do? Wh- what did you do this weekend?" And obviously, we can't do that because the weekend, like I said, hasn't happened yet. Just started. Just started. So, what are you guys doing this weekend? I got a packed weekend. Yeah, packed weekend. Friday night. I'm doing relatable radio. (laughs) Uh, Saturday, uh, going over to a friend's house, and then after taking the kids over and hanging out with other kids at a friend's house, I have uh, a party party to go to for uh, my hockey team. And then Sunday, I am doing top golf with my parents, sister, brother-in-law, and we're taking my parents over. My mom and dad, they they love golfing, so we're taking them. My dad's birthday was in January. My mom's birthday's in February, so we're doing a combined birthday thing and taking them to Top Golf. Is that the thing like the video golf? Pretty much. Uh, no, 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 no. Top Golf. Top Golf is like a physical driving range, but there's a game involved mm. where these big bowls out in the field that you got to hit and there's little chips in every ball. What? So it keeps score and like you have to wave your club in front of the little sensor thing for a ball to come out and it tells you what club to use and there's a whole point system. It's supposed to be yeah. a blast. I think it's a crazy high tech uh, driving range. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yo, did, you, did you see the video of Patrick Mahomes at Top Golf? Yes, I did. Nuts. Dude, he's a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. Where is this? Uh, yeah, Mount Airy, New Jersey. Oh, okay. So it's like wow. an hour away. So it'll be fun. It'll, it'll be blessed. Um, I just realized that I didn't introduce you. Your co-host, Kev. Oh, yeah. Co-host, might be Kev. News. Yep. And, and co-host, again, Danny. Hold on. Again, he's dropping the ball. But go, go ahead. It's fine. He's allowed to. <laughs> it's my first time taking over Relator War Radio. <laughs> usually, I just kind of hang back and answer occasional questions, but usually, I'm just on my phone. Yep. Um, <laughs> co-host, Danny, is also here. I am. So again, we are might be news. We happen on Mondays. Uh, you heard yesterday the ladies take over might be news. Uh, if you if you don't listen to might be news, check it out. Yep. God damn it! Yep, we're trying our best to be relatable tonight. Uh, Danny, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, you know, I, I got a pretty good little weekend plans. I think we're going to go to Home Depot, buy some carpeting, <laughs> maybe Bed Bath and Beyond. I don't know we'll have enough time, but. <laughs> No, um, <clears throat> Saturday, uh, I'm actually uh, going out with one of my uh, one of my real good friends. Just going to go down to the bar, have a few drinks, maybe get something to eat from the restaurant. And then Sunday, still trying to decide if I want to watch the Super Bowl or not. Yeah. Decide if you want to watch? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm going to hate watch it. The, Dude, only, I, I, the only reason 
I'm thinking about actually watching is to see Tony Romo commentate the Super Bowl. Oh, is he going to commentate? He it? is. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. all in. Yeah, I'm all in. He is a fantastic commentator. He's so good. He's incredible. He, he sits there and he goes, all right, this right, they're going to run it right up the middle. Boom, they run it up the middle. All right, he's going to have a, a pass down the, the right sideline in the corner of the end zone. Boom, exactly what it is. I'm not into it. He's a genius. He's not. I guess he is. He, dude, he played the game for how many years? I mean, he should be able to call it. Would you feel <laughs> differently if he wasn't the quarterback <laughs> for the Dallas Cowboys? Probably. Yes and no. no. Because he's goofy. He's he is goofy. goofy. Like that's what I don't like. I, I you know don't he, disagree with you that he he predicts plays and it's a lot of fun to watch and like that part of it's cool. But he's just a goofball. Can't get over it. Don't like who his else face. is goofy. Peyton Manning. Oh, yeah, but he you you think you think Tony Romo kills it at calling plays? Can you imagine Peyton Manning doing it? No, I can they, only imagine they on ca- fucking they, all state commercials. They calculated <laughs> uh, Tony Romo's thing. He got like sixty percent of the predictions that he's made, you know, correct. Mm-hmm. I I I would venture to say that Peyton would get eighty percent of Totally least, agreed. At least. Shh. He is okay. a genius so, and a master of the game. So with the Super Bowl on Sunday and you being a diehard Eagles fan like I am, yeah, would you rather see Tom Brady get his sixth Super Bowl ring or or Jared Goff win the Super Bowl before Carson Wentz? I will never say that I want to see Tom Brady win another one. So if this game could end in a tie, I would love it, but it won't. And uh, so, therefore, I'm rooting for the Rams. What if Tom Brady gets sacked, gets hurt, and they have to bring in their backup, and the backup wins? Are you okay with that? No. <laughs> Taylor and I were just talking about this, and I, I really think that um, I, I have a problem with Jared Goff winning before Carson Wentz. I brought I that up too. and said, I don't like that because do they picked him first, and yep. I wanted to be, I wanted to have the better quarterback. Yep. The other thing that I was hoping, which Taylor said probably won't happen, is I kind of thought, let them get another Super Bowl and hopefully they retire and revamp the team. Like I want to see Brady out and Belichick out, and like maybe if they get it, they'll they'll hang up, hang it up. The only person that would leave would be Gronk. The only person, Belichick would still be there. Brady would still be there, especially if they won again. All if, the people if, that I I yeah. don't want to be back would be back. I if, thought there was rumors last year for the Eagles Super Bowl. That if they won, they were going to hang it up. Yeah. For real, though, my opinion is I thought this was relatable radio and not might be sports. Yeah, we need to get off this topic. <laughs> well, dude, we're dudes and we're going to talk about what we want to talk no, about. No, we're what allowed we, to go on rants. We and can't just go That's on rants. That's what they do. We can. <laughs> but quickly, I want to counter your point about the Jared Goff thing because fuck it. We do have a better quarterback. The Eagles have a better quarterback. Point blank, period. Whether or not Carson Wentz played in the Super Bowl or even played in any of those playoff games to get us to the Super Bowl and win it last year doesn't take away from the fact that he was on an MVP straight-up sprint by himself at that point. And, uh, I mean, I think that next year he's going to have a way better season. What about what, what about RG3? Like, I, I get I get worried that he's an RG3. Yeah, but Carson's not that type of quarterback either like he he's not constantly running rg3 rg3 like he passed the ball occasionally but his biggest threat was his legs and he used them every single play carson gets out of the pocket but he doesn't like that's not his bread and butter yeah running but see back in college he did not win the championship game because he was injured and then he led us to the playoffs, didn't play in the Super Bowl because he was injured. And now this year, same thing, got injured. So that RG3 thing does scare the shit out of me. Yeah, it bothers me. It does. I think it, it just, why wouldn't he be awkward this year? Why wouldn't he be? Well, he, there's a there's he literally a statue. At all this year. There's this, no, I agree. There's a statue of somebody else in front of the stadium. There's uh, uh, the whole city that's divided on this. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think, and he, uh, not to mention, he missed the whole off season with a new offensive coordinator, knew all kinds of things in offense, new receivers. Da 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 da. Not everybody, but you know what I'm saying. New running back, certainly. 
I think that he he missed too much time to start when he did. They rushed him back and shit happens. Mark my words, he's going to be just fine next year. That's how I feel. I hope so. So, uh, Nathan, you're here for the car show. We're going to go to the car show together. Yep. When you hear this, it's over. I'll have already been to the car show. But I've never been to a car show before. Has anybody been to a car show before? No, I actually just got tickets. I'm taking both of my boys next Friday. Okay. And you've never been to one before? Never been to one. They're very much into cars right now. They're at that age where the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, that's all cool to them. So I'm going to I'm gonna surprise them and keep them home from school on Friday. And we're going to go down to Philly and spend some time down there. That's nice. cool. Yeah. This is the third biggest show compared to SEMA. Is it really? Yeah. Shit. So it, it'll take it five, six hours. Yeah. Especially uh, with kids. Yeah. What is SEMA? Like some custom car show. Everybody with the newest shit comes out. And- I've been to, I've been to like a, like a small, you know, parking lot, kind of a few classic cars, whatever. Like that was like the, the only kind of car show, quote unquote, that I've ever been to. And it yeah, was cool. Yeah. I've seen pictures of people going to the Philadelphia auto show and it looks pretty awesome so i'm i'm really excited about it apparently yeah. they have like um they have a, a whole big jeep exhibit and they have an obstacle course set up and you can actually sit in the passenger seat while a uh, somebody drives you through this obstacle course that's awesome climbing over rocks going up hills down hills all that kind of shit yeah you can get in and out of a lot of the cars there yeah. right like yeah. you can like check them all out and you can sit in like them prototypes I, I and, I, you can sit in most of them but the like the high end exotic cars right, yeah, i don't yeah. think you're allowed to you get can in, sit so. in some really yeah okay i'm interested to see like how many of them i can fit in <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> or like cuz my car we've discussed on our show a couple of times it's a clown car yeah it's tiny tiny and i look silly getting in and out of it <laughs> But like I'm curious, I just want to. I'm I'm interested to see like all the cars because I I like cars. I'm not like a car freak or like fanatic or anything, and I'm certainly not mechanically inclined. But um, cars are cool. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's this pickup truck that I saw online that I want to like see if it's going to be at some of the auto shows so I can check it out. But the company that makes the UPS trucks made a pickup truck that's a hybrid. It's a or it's a plug-in electric. But it also has a three-cylinder engine in it to be a generator backup. So, like, if you use up all your electric on, you know, on the electric car, then it kicks in this, like, gasoline motor to recharge it. And then you can, like, plug in your power tools to it. But it just looks like a really sick um, pickup truck that gets all these miles. But there's, like, no dealerships for that. So, like, I'm kind of hoping they're going to start rolling these out at trade shows or, you know, at an auto show where you can actually go see it. I think that would be so dope. That is cool. That sounds pretty awesome. I know that uh, Jeep is putting out a pickup truck. Have you seen that? Yeah, I did see pictures picture of, of it. Yeah, that, thing that looks, looks pretty looks cool. Awesome. Have you seen yeah. it, Kev? Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It looks like a bigger version of the Subaru Baja, but much cooler. I think much cooler. <laughs> I actually, I actually saw at uh, at a new customer I just signed up today a custom Jeep truck. Really, it was dope. It was huh. dope. John, what are you doing this weekend? Really nothing. Um, radio show tonight, obviously. Tomorrow, I'm just hanging with the kids. Wife's working. Uh, maybe uh, have some people over for dinner. We'll see. And uh, Sunday, Super Bowl, man. Yeah. I am going to be living lower level lifestyle. I forgot to tell you. Lower level lifestyle? What are yeah. you going to a Flyers game? Going to a Flyers game. Yeah. Amy got me tickets for our anniversary. Lower level lifestyle. And um, she, I, I mean, to find a sitter and everything, uh, it, it would be a, it would be a huge pain to, for me and her to go. So I'm taking my dad, but we're six rows off the ice. Nice. nice. Dude, I am stoked. Is they're this the closest you've been? great hockey yeah. right now, too. Yeah. yeah. They're five game win streak. Five game win streak. Yeah. They just beat the Boston Bruins last night, tonight being Friday. They just beat the Boston Bruins. They have a game Saturday, and then I'll be going to the game on Monday. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Against they're, the on, they're on a hot streak, so hopefully they keep that up. Yeah. Heart Kid got like rookie of the month or something. Rick, yep. He got rookie of the month for January. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Dude, that, is that kid, the goalie? Yeah, that kid is nuts. I haven't seen any, but I heard about it. Dude, he's 20 years old. He's 20, and he plays like a fucking veteran. 
That's cool. awesome. It's good. I remember hearing a commentator say, like, you can't teach what this kid does. No. It's, like, completely natural, and he is going to be very good yep. at that position. Yeah. Yeah, if the Flyers trade him, they're out of their fucking minds. They'll probably out. trade him. Uh, well, <laughs> they, uh, the GM, um, the new, new appointed GM just came out with a whole thing. He said, nobody except for two players are off the trade table, uh, off the trading block, except the only two players are Giroux and Hart. That's the only two players that the GM wants to absolutely hold on to, but everybody else he's willing to look at offers. No shit. Well, they were playing like shit. Yeah. They're still in dead last. No, second second to last. So, but yeah. So takeover week. I, I, I thought of this, like I was saying, to kind of, you know, spice the week up. We've been putting out a lot of material, a lot of content, very consistently, um, <clears throat> which is something I'm really proud of. <coughs> and uh, like I said, I kind of wanted to give listeners a brief intro to other uh, personalities on the network if they only listen to one show. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, the ladies are doing, they did Might Be News might be bruised is going to crash. Might be sports. Yep. And uh, you uh, might be might be bruised actually has a special episode this week. Yeah, we actually um, are going to have Levante Brewing from Westchester on the show with us. So we're really excited to uh, to actually have somebody from the industry come in. They've they have a um, they have a lot of big announcements that they've come out with over the last couple of weeks. Um, they're pushing out distribution in Pittsburgh now. They got a new canning line. They're starting a home delivery service. So there's a lot of really big things, and, and people have a lot of questions about it. So um, they wanted to kind of – it was really neat that they thought that, hey, this would be a nice platform to, to put it out there. So we're super excited, and it's a big deal for us. The That's huge. That's, huge. That's, huge. That's fucking wild, man. That's cool? really cool. Uh, so <clears throat> a lot of people have been tuning in. And I'm really, really thankful for that. I'm biggest thankful. month ever, right? It was the biggest month ever. Uh, and to think that less than a year ago, Kev, or no, it was, no, it was like, a year ago. It was like two years ago. Was it that long? Yeah. No. When when did we like legitimately think about quitting? That I was can't no. Yeah, it's been it's been a year at least. How long have you been here? Well, well, I've been in my house for two years in July, and I remember us talking about bringing me on while before I moved. So it has to be two, two, it was two, two plus years, two years ago. For the listeners that have never listened to Might Be News <clears throat> and only listened to Relatable Radio, a brief synopsis of how this whole thing started. Uh, <clears throat> Kev and I, co-host Kev and I, started Might Be News literally right after the 2016 election yeah yep and we we went for 10 weeks and we thought we were just gonna stop we were you we and were i were in 11 plays an episode yeah and i called you up one day and i said dude i fucking talk to more people in one day than that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah straight up <laughs> like just pointless what are we doing and uh, so we we decided to bring co-host Danny in for season two, and it, there was like a long time in between season one. That we wanted to let everybody forget. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and season one, season one doesn't exist on the internet, so technically, <laughs> people have no idea. If you're new to the network, you have no idea what happened in season one, and that's fine. But um, because season two is legitimately when it started getting good. Yeah. And, uh, but le okay. That's what I meant to say. Less than a year ago, we got really hype over a hundred plays in a week and I shaved my beard. Yeah. That's what I meant uh, to say with the less than a year thing. But less than a year ago, we got super hype for like a hundred plays in a week and I shaved my beard. And now it's like people are tuning in and it's just phenomenal. So if you're out there listening, thank you so much. Tell your friends. And if you like us, go listen to Might Be News if you never listened to it before. Boom. It's on Monday. 
mbnnetwork.com. We had CJ on here last week talking about all kinds of different things. Uh, he he hooked up the website. There's a whole it's 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 basically brand new. The website's awesome. It's great, right? I think it's just yeah. so convenient for everybody to to get to the platform they want instead of clicking the SoundCloud link or trying to search for it. Um, you know, we just made it. You're putting in the extra work to make it easy for the listeners, and that's awesome. Right. It's. It's it's so much easier to find all the newest episodes of whatever shows that you're into, and find them on the pro the the, the program or app or whatever that you want to listen to them on the platform, and uh, it's just right there, easy easy easy, two clicks, you know what I'm saying? Easy. Usually, relatable radio is run by the wives, our wives. Of the might be news now. Of uh, night might be news. Maybe maybe if you listen to the show and you're brand new to the, your new listener, you you might not know that, but um, you probably know that Jackie's my wife because you listen to the show and I'm on the show. But Amy is the, this Co-host is Kev. Kev. This is the Kev that we are that we're always talking so much <laughs> shit about. This is the Kev, and uh, Danny is is Allison's husband. So yep. can wanted- you do the the turkey as well as she can? <laughs> Wow. Here we go. wow, he's he's like warming up. <laughs> was it good? That was, was good. It, good. it was good. All right. It was good. <laughs> um, he stretched out his mouth and everything. He did. <laughs> that was good. That was good. But uh it's it's usually a uh I suppose more geared towards like being a mom and and kind of girly stuff like for example last time they talked a lot about Grey's Anatomy which I'm sure nobody at this table probably watches John you were into Grey's Anatomy for a little while right I think I I think I we watched it Robin and I but years and years ago Yeah it was a long time ago Yeah like maybe first season or something like that but <laughs> I I never stuck with it I listened to it when Jackie was watching it, it was I was like what using, 15 or 16 yeah, seasons It's now? ridiculous it's, it's right. a soap opera Yeah that's soap opera. Exactly what it is. Yeah. But um, so I wanted to talk about some like guy things or like not necessarily feminine things. Um, I don't know. Like, for example, do you guys when you get in the shower, do you do you pee in the shower? <laughs> Just straight up with it. <laughs> straight up with it. That's a question I asked Jackie a while ago. I was like, babe, do you pee in the shower? Do girls pee in the shower? <laughs> I pee in the shower. <laughs> I do. I pee in the shower almost every time. Every time. Yeah. Every time. So I, I, if I had to pee in the shower, I would. Nine times out of ten, I don't pee in the shower because I shower in the morning, and the first thing I do when I wake up right. is I take a piss. Right. So no, nine times out of ten, I don't. But if I had to, I would. <laughs> By the time I shower, I've had. Um, at least a glass of water, a cup of coffee, maybe started drinking green tea. So, like, I've had a lot of liquids before I get in the shower. Gotcha. Uh, how many beers in the morning? <laughs> yeah, two. Okay. <laughs> Danny, see, I don't shower in the morning because of where I work. I'm usually absolutely disgusting by yeah. the time I'm done work. So I shower when I get home from work. Same. Um, no, because. I, I usually use the bathroom as soon as I get home, and then I jump right into the shower. So I usually don't have to pay when I'm in the shower. I'll just hold that shit until I get in the shower, <laughs> straight up. If I know that that's where I'm going, you know, I'll just be like, damn, I got to take a piss. And clothes just flying off, and I get in the shower. <laughs> People brush their teeth in the shower, too. I do. Do you? Yeah, yeah I That's love a weird it. one. I don't. I've Try never it. tried that. Try it. All right. While, you- while you're peeing. <laughs> yeah, especially if you got like minty toothpaste. So the cool mint mixed with like the hot steam from the shower. Interesting, weird, but it's I I like it. I enjoy Yo, it. My, so you remember Jerry in Virginia? It's my old stepdad, right? Yeah. Um, he told me that a doctor told him to make it a a daily practice to pee on your feet while you're in the shower to prevent getting athlete's foot. He was fucking with you. <laughs> I've never heard that. Well, hold on. Do you have athlete's feet? No, I don't. No, my feet are fine. You pee in the shower, right? Yeah. Do you have athlete's no. feet? But but sometimes I think Wait about a that. Minute. Like one or two times a year, I'm like, do you have I athlete's my foot? Feet? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no. I never forgot Shut that story. Should I be doing this? Yeah, right. 
No, I <coughs> obviously in order to pee in the shower, you have to have good good drains. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't just like pee in a puddle. You know what I'm saying? That you're standing. Yeah, in it. you don't want to be standing in it. No, you don't want to be standing in the pee. <laughs> you don't want to be standing in the pee, but you're fucking sitting there peeing on your feet. <laughs> I don't pee on my Listen, feet, Kev. I <laughs> tell you. I mean, maybe there might have been a drip drop somewhere in there. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of water going on. I can't really keep track of everything, but as far as I know, everything's going straight where it's supposed to be going. If you ever have to shower in a public place where more than one people shower, like a group of guys, yeah. don't ever pee in the shower no 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 i would never plan on doing that <laughs> and it's very frowned upon i'm sure i would never very. Do that. <laughs> but i asked i asked jackie about it a while ago i was like babe do you do you pee in the shower because i pee in the shower sometimes and jackie did you try peeing in the shower she did. <laughs> she, for the, if you couldn't hear it, she said i do now that i know that you do it <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> it's, a, it's just safe water um, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Will yeah. you poop in the shower? <laughs> yeah, I poop in the shower no, all the time. No, but I'm saying, it, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If a guy has to take a piss, he pisses in a toilet and just leave it. Did you say toilet? You got, what's that? Toilet. Toilet. Leave it until you have to, uh, to do number two. Do you, do you guys, John? You asked this before the show. Do you face the shower when you shower? Like, do you face the shower head or do you like not typically? I do that? switch it up while I'm in there. Yeah, I get like, all the soap out of my hair. I twirl around. Yeah, yeah, I think I switch it up. But it was funny because I was talking to Robin about this at dinner, like funny things like this, and uh, she was like, "I know that you face forward in the shower, but she faces the other way." Okay. So she like, usually she usually has her back to the shower head, straight like the, all, the whole time, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you ever, do you ever peek out of the shower? Peek out? Like, oh, you guys talked about this on a show before. I do. Think. You ever like have like this like weird feeling that there's somebody like in there, not in there, but like I don't know. Do you ever have the 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 inkling to just look out the shower curtain? No, we got a clear shower curtain. Never. Oh, you have a clear one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so that's cool. <laughs> I do, but for a different reason though. Kids. No, like if I'm working the two to ten shift, I get home and I'm getting in the shower like ten forty. Dark. And no, Allison's usually laying there in bed, and I usually say, "Hey, I'm gonna leave the door unlocked. Give me like two minutes, and then <laughs> you know, just stick your hand in." <laughs> so I'm always standing there. I'm always locked and ready to go, and I keep looking out. Is she coming in? Nope. God damn it. Ten minutes later. <laughs> nope. God damn it. And she always wonders why I take such long showers. Because <laughs> you're waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> I see. Nine nine point nine times out of ten, every time I shower, I'm home alone. Like there's no one here, and uh, I don't know. I feel totally safe in this place. Like it's not like a thing, but like ever since I, as long as I can remember, I've always done this. Like I'll I'm in the shower, and I don't. It's not even like I hear something. It's like been a while since i've looked out the shower like, <laughs> just look out there real quick just make sure everything is cool and i don't know why i do it but i was just curious if anybody else you does. do that every time like two times every time <laughs> dude there's <laughs> something wrong with you <laughs> no, you, know, you know what i just thought of when um when i was younger i don't think you and i ever did it to each other i don't remember but i remember uh when i was living in virginia and i had those stepbrothers that when we would shout or like you know they would shower one of them would be showering and I would take apart a, a coat hanger and I'd put it under the bathroom door and pull their clothes and the towel <laughs> <laughs> back outside so they get out of the shower and then they don't have any clothes or a, uh, That's or a towel. Yeah. I, I just thought of that. That's funny. We used to sneak in and flush the toilet so the water would get cold. That's funny. That's a good one. Just fill up a bucket with cold water yeah. and pull it over the pour it over the, the bar. <laughs> so what other guy things? What other? What else? What else? I got a weird one. I'm just kind of curious. Do you do you put deodorant on before you put your shirt on in the morning, getting dressed or whatever, or do you do it after? I always do it before. before. Yeah, me, me too. I shouldn't say always, but before I almost always I do it before. before. Yeah. But like my wife, my my, my wife does it differently. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Do, yeah, she pulls her shirt up and puts deodorant on, and I'm like, who the fuck does that? Like, hey, that makes for before. a messy situation. Yeah, just no. I mean, I use spray deodorant. Really? Okay. Yeah, and that lasts. Oh yeah. Who I, else? Do, the do you, Dove Invisible Spray for men. 
because I was using for a while Old Spice. And remember when Old Spice had that uh, lawsuit against them for the chemical burns? Yeah. yeah. I was getting the chemical burns. Oh, wow. It was bad. Like, really? I would lift up my arm, and I'd have this huge red circle around my entire armpit from chemical burns. Wow. So I had to stop using Old Spice for a while, and then I found the Dove um, non-irritant antiperspirant deodorant 24-hour, 48-hour-plus shit. Nice. Okay. I, I got another one real quick. Do you share your blanket with your wife in bed? Yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. You guys do too? I think that's the craziest effing thing ever. Like we used to when we first started dating. And then we're like, why are we fighting over this shit? Like, let's just have separate blankets. It's so much better. And I'll never go back. And I think that's one of those things that like we do, but we think most other people don't. Yeah, you most other people. Yeah, don't. most other people. <laughs> but to me, it's crazy. Like, why would you ever want to? Well, I we mean, don't I, share. we don't share. I would hope you don't share with John. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about my girlfriend, you. No, we 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 have like really huge king size everything. Uh, like it's all. Uh, that's not to say that Jackie uh, uses like a heating blanket as or a heated blanket as well sometimes, which I don't use. You know what I'm saying? Like. So that happens. Sometimes she'll put an she'll add an extra layer, like a smaller blanket, just on top or underneath the the other blankets that we have because she's always cold. But I don't. I, I don't just think it makes that. so much more sense that you're not like interrupting each other's sleep or tossing and turning and and feeling each other move and stuff. And you got your own blanket, you can just get in and out. I don't know. It makes so much sense to me. I can't believe nobody else does it. I mean, it does make sense because like Allison, she rolls herself up like a burrito sometimes. Like literally like a burrito. And then there's other times I get home from work and I usually like to sit down and watch TV and sometimes I pass out on my recliner, so I spend some time down there. But no, if we're in bed, we use the same blanket. Hmm. I I warm up my my tootsies on Amy's feet. (laughs) (laughs) What? Because they're freaking ice cubes most of the time. Who yours are? Yeah. That's the opposite for Jackie and me. (laughs) <laughs> she she's like literally always ice cold and like we get into bed and i'm just she like gets up close to me and i'm just like holy shit like <laughs> fucking yeah. cold same with robin i'm always like emitting um, intense amounts of heat yeah she's especially like, at You're night. Like a radiator yeah. yeah so does your uh does finn sleep with you guys yes he does in bed yeah uh, oh my god yeah I like never do that at your uh, feet or no. in between you uh, or it's a mix but most of the time he's he's usually in between us but like most of the time he's down by like our knees or our feet. Yeah. Gotcha. Now see Roxy, she is in between us, usually closer to me because I give off more body heat, but under the blanket as well. Get out of uh, here. Wow. Uh, she is like a person. She's if, freaking if, spoiled. If I'm if I'm working the midnight <laughs> shift and I come home from work, she's sleeping in my spot using my pillow and has the blanket up to her neck. Like an actual person. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about more relatable things. We're all kind of new to this. We have like a super structured show on Monday that like follows a pretty, you know, direct Schedule. format. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll figure it out after this. Everybody, make sure you check out an all-new Novak and Franz this week, followed by a brand spanking new special edition, Might Be Brews, and Friday's a double header. We got Might Be Brews, an exclusive Might Be Brews, and an all-new episode of Might Be Tunes. Mike Nappy, Tamaro, live hip-hop in the pit. It's going to be absolutely crazy. You're going to want to make sure that you check out everything that we got going on at the Might Be News Network, people. It's going crazy. Check out the website. Find your favorite podcast. Find your favorite place to stream it. Super easy. Shout out to CJ, technical director, spiritual guru. Everything is live and popping on the Might Be News Network. Back to Takeover Week.
Welcome back to the takeover episode of Relatable Radio. I am not Jackie. Kev is not Amy. And Danny is not Allison. But we're here doing it. Real quick. Yeah. <laughs> What's that beat in the background? Uh, it's, a, it's a cool beat by uh, Just Green. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. That sounded nice. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because I am Just Green and I made that beat. So I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like I said, we're, we're, we are Might Be News, but this is Relatable Radio. What are you doing over there, Kev? Are you mocking me, dude? Yeah. Yeah. You're mocking me? Big time. Semi, like, loud into the mic? Yeah. Dummy. Guess what? Get your shit together. How many times have you fucked up this episode? Mm-hmm. I can count two. Enough. Uh-huh. I fixed a major mistake <laughs> on break. I don't know. You weren't here for it, but I fixed a major thing. Fixed a major mistake. You yeah. didn't introduce us. You let music start playing while Danny was talking. That doesn't exist anymore. Thanks, Kev. I'm cutting this out, too. Great job. Oh, is that the major mistake? <laughs> <laughs> he just spent all this time editing and cutting out that one piece, and it sounds flawless. It, does, it sounds like, flawless. People won't even know where nope, it is. They will like, now they do. Know that it happened. No, they still don't, but they know what happened now. Maybe I'll just leave this in for comedic value. Anyway, um, let's get relatable. Yeah, let's get relatable. So uh, the girls, they watch... Um, well, we talk about a lot of different things on the show, like different things that we watch. They talk a lot about Grey's Anatomy. Grey's though. Anatomy is a, a repeating uh, thing sometimes. They talk a lot about it. But our collectively, at least on Might Be News, probably certainly one of our favorite shows is The Office. And, Love it. Uh, so we can talk a little bit about The Office right now. Kev, have you seen the entire series? Yes. Danny, I know you definitely have. Um. Yeah, a lot. I've probably seen, I'm not even exaggerating, um, I've probably seen every episode minimum of 15, 20 times each. Wow. Every episode. That's John, crazy. John, you just said yeah. off air that you have not seen the whole thing. Yeah, I, I think I've seen a lot of the Michael Scott episodes, but I didn't see anything without him. So I think like the newer or So you're from episodes, season seven on, you haven't seen. Maybe. Probably not. How many seasons are there? Ten. Nine. 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 Oh, he got them. <laughs> <laughs> Nine seasons. Um, and Nathan, you've you've only seen like an episode, maybe. Yeah, bits and pieces. Um, first of all, I I highly recommend it to you. It's, oh, absolutely. It's on Re- Netflix. Recommended to everybody. Everyone. Um, but uh, I wanted to ask you guys, for those of you who have an answer to this. Do you have a favorite office moment? I do. One popped into my head immediately, and it's when uh, Jim's working at the other office. Yes, and he sends a fax to Dwight <laughs> from the future, from the future. Yeah. to up to <laughs> from <Yeah>. himself. <laughs> One of the funniest like, things I've ever yeah. seen ever. <laughs> Ever, he, Yo. he slaps the pot of coffee Yo. out of <laughs> Stanley's hand, <laughs> and, and he Stanley, says, "You'll thank me later." Yeah. <laughs> J- Jim sends that fax, and he's like, "Hey, Dwight, this is Dwight, Dwight from, the, from future. the future." Yeah, <laughs> so he thinks it's from him on yeah. Dunder Mifflin pa- <laughs> paper stock or whatever with the logo on the top. Dude, it is yeah. so funny. That was That's funny. The, like when that happened, like the first time I saw it, and I didn't watch The Office like live on TV. You know what I mean? I I binge watched it uh, a, a couple years ago, and the first time I saw that dude, I rewound it twenty <laughs> times, like straight up. I could not get over it. I didn't even care what the rest of the episode was about, yeah. like because that was the big. That was just an intro to the episode, right? right. Like, yeah, the, that was the very first part. Like that, and it never happened again. But like that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. I just thought of another one. If it's okay, it's go not ahead. okay. Somebody else. All right, somebody go. else. Go. Oh, we'll well, I have two. Oh, I have. I have a favorite introduction. Let's do one then, at a time. Okay, you're such a dick. You are a <laughs> dick. Good comeback. Um, <laughs> my favorite uh, office introduction is. The the Jim and Pam moment with up dog and then Michael Scott walks in. <laughs> What's up, dog? What's up, dog? <laughs> and then Michael Scott walks around trying to get everybody with it and everybody's like, I don't got time. I don't got time. And then he goes goes to Dwight and he says, 
he he said he tries to do it to him and totally botches it totally botches it and he goes oh got him (laughs) oh it is so funny it is so funny danny do you want favorite introduction or favorite episode start with your favorite out of the two and we'll move on we'll just keep going around but like i so my favorite episode it it probably going to be uh michael's final episode um and it's for the simple thing that like when you watch this show when you watch the show like you were you almost felt like you were a part of that family yes and you got really involved in these characters right and at the end when everybody from the office sang to michael scott in the conference room the five thousand nine hundred, you know whatever minutes yeah they Michael didn't know that was going to happen. It was totally unplanned. It was yeah. unplanned yeah. because they wanted his pure emotion from that scene and him standing there crying. That's actually him crying. Yeah. Knowing that, you know, these this is they're them saying goodbye to him. That's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah. So that's that's one of my favorite episodes just for, you know, the bond that that entire crew had with each other. And you get to see just a little glimpse of that. Yeah. And that's why I like that episode. My that's a good one. Uh, my favorite, my favorite office office moment was the one that John said, but definitely a very 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 close runner up is when Jim puts uh, Andy's cell phone oh, in the ceiling. In the ceiling. <laughs> Anger management. That shit yeah. was so funny. Like, because first of all. Andy, I hate his guts on the show. Do you like, really? Oh my god, I can't stand. But like. In the a nard funny way. dog? In a funny way. You know what I mean? Like, I know that that's the his character, dog. and I'm supposed to feel this way about him. Like, I think that that's what he was going but for. But I don't feel that way about him. I don't I, hate his guts. I just, I don't, I should, maybe he's I should say he's, he's like He's like the annoying little brother. Would you be friends with him in real life? Uh, Andy from The Office. Maybe. No. Well, salesman Andy, yes. Manager Andy, he was a dick. Yeah, he, was. <laughs> he was a dick. He so was. I wouldn't be friends with manager Andy, but salesman Andy, I mean, I, I he would just I start randomly singing a cappella songs like yeah, out of I'd nowhere. I'd play guitar with his banjo. I would hang out with him. <laughs> Dude, Dude I, like, when 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 they first bring when the the branches first merge and uh and they're they're in their conference room and Michael's trying to get the CD player to play the the night of the Roxbury yeah. sound and he just comes in with that with with the beat it's just <laughs> so on point <laughs> so on key I, I dude I like Andy I can't stand him but I I feel like I am one of the people that like they were targeting with Andy like you know what I mean like. I don't know. Like, Jim is just such a a normal guy. Dwight is, there's no one like Dwight. It's such an incredible character. There's no one like Dwight. But, like, Andy is just, like, this extreme, like, character that I just, like, I just couldn't get down with him. Hmm. Yeah, like, he gets on some people's nerves and other people. Like, I just, I can't really get down with him. I like Ed Helms. Like, I like him in other movies and whatever else he's in. Sometimes he's kind of annoying. But, like... When I feel like when he's annoying, it's when he's acting like Andy. <laughs> like when I, you know what I mean? Like cause he's been that kind of character in other movies and shit. You know what I mean? Dude, I don't know. In The Hangover, when he initially sees the lion and the or the tiger in the bathroom. Oh my god, <laughs> it's hysterical. Yeah, yeah he well, was you, great. In the have hangover. you guys seen the movie Tag yet? Yes. yes. He was, yeah. yeah. He was good in Tag. Great in no, tag. I didn't see that. Oh, dude, you gotta see Tag. Okay. It's on, such oh, a good movie. I'll watch it tomorrow. Dude, it's on it. HBO Go right now. Okay. Watch so it. good. You'll yeah. love it. So good. Yeah, what it's, about uh vacation with him? He was, I, I loved that. I didn't I just I I was I literally laughing it. my ass off the entire time. Oh wait, that's the one with uh uh Jennifer Aniston? No. No, no that's where the Millers. Oh, right, 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 right. right, right that's right. a good movie. It's good like one. Christmas oh, yeah. vacation and and vacation movies, this is, but it's I didn't see Clark Gridwall's his this son. This is Rusty. Rusty. It's Rusty. And how oh, plays Rusty. Oh, 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 okay. I remember hearing about that, but I didn't yeah, see Christina it. Yeah, Christina Applegate's in it, um, and they take a family trip. And I was just like, you know, um, browsing for a comedy and thought I would try it, and it just got me on like every level. I was just dying laughing, especially the the youngest son. He got me every time. Yeah. What else? Does, what does other it, office? Do, do they ever? One. Well, do they ever go over what Creed's position is? 
Dude, Creed is <laughs> undercover my favorite character. Yeah. He's the underrated best yeah. character on the office. He really is. He really is. But do they ever say he's what so he funny. does or what his position no, yeah, is? He, no, he's the he's quality, quality control. Assurance. Yeah, he's quality assurance. Remember because when the when the um the watermark on the paper is like the cartoon characters having sex or something. Yeah. You remember that yeah, was okay. his screw up. You know, <laughs> like that's what his position is. The way Creed is too, like. He doesn't give a shit who you are. Like he went and called the freaking printing company and had some poor lady fired. Yo. And it wasn't even <laughs> her fault for the watermark. And then after that, he like got a card and like he was like, I'm getting a bunch of money together for this lady. She just got fired and everybody gives him money. And then he just <laughs> takes the money and throws the card <laughs> no. in the trash. Creed is the <laughs> hardest. He's a savage, dude. He's definitely a savage. My gosh. Like in you know, the one Halloween episode where everybody comes dressed up and he's just like covered in blood and then like it's like <laughs> they do the confessional thing he's like I had no idea this was Halloween I just lucked out like, <laughs> just like covered in blood like who knows what Creed just did when, when the branch is closing and Michael Scott is using board games to yeah. entertain everybody and Creed comes walking in and Creed's like what's going on and Michael Scott goes there's been a murder and he goes no, he just I'll leaves. be right back and just leaves <laughs> so there's there's so much about Creed that, that you we don't, don't know, know. <laughs> there you go. like wh- where's the body of the person he just killed and he's covered in blood he, yeah right he, uh, <laughs> like he, what he, the fuck Creed may have killed multiple people during the time period that yeah. the office takes place in and you just don't even know. <laughs> yep. And that and like when um uh what's her name? Meredith, she like hurts herself. I forget what she hurt herself with, but the it's like the doctor just gave me a bunch of pills and he's like, What? Oxycodone, oxycodone, blah blah blah. <laughs> oh, that like, was that was when Michael ran over with a car. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> um, I have another favorite moment, and that was when Michael Scott stepped on his George Foreman grill in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did he wrap his fucking foot with bowl wrap? <laughs> <laughs> but like the greatest part was like when he called into the office to like I need somebody to come get me and, yeah. and Dwight was like I'm on my way he's like, he's like please don't send please don't send Dwight and then like Dwight literally runs into a fucking he like gets in a car accident trying to get there that was no that was wasn't that different was that it was, different yeah that was when Dwight had the concussion well but that's Dwight how got he got concussion it. from right. the car accident from but, the telephone pole but isn't that the same episode yep. like he's going to try and save michael that's because like his thing they take michael to the or they take dwight to the hospital because of the concussion yeah and michael tries to stick his foot into the cat scan machine right 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 yeah. that's what it, yeah yep. all right all right all right <laughs> Go do up. you get emotional for a the uh niagara falls episodes B, the very last episode uh, for Dwight and um, what's Spoiler the f- alert. Al- Dwight and what's her face? Allison. Uh, no, it's or not, not Allison. Allison. Um, Angela? Angela. Angela. Yeah. Dwight and Angela's wedding when they bring back Michael Scott for the bestest mensch. Do you get emotional? I cried like a baby when Michael Scott came back. For the bestest mensch. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, there's no describing the way I was crying for that. <laughs> Spoiler <Nothing>. alert. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that. But yeah, but I kind of know it. Yeah, no, it, uh, it. That was a very emotional moment. Yeah. for the show, absolutely. It was, it was a perfect way. That was that was the the show finale. Yeah, that was and the it was end. just the perfect way to wrap everything up into one and bring him back for his final goodbye. Right. It was great. Yeah. It was great. Because throughout the whole show, Dwight is phenomenal. And, like, you know how much he loves Michael Scott throughout the whole thing. Right. Right? Yeah. Even though, like, I know that if Dwight, in my mind, I feel like I know, if if Dwight had the opportunity to be Michael Scott's boss, I think he might. But I don't know. I think that Dwight just, like, had, like, this thing. Like, he he knew that, like, Michael was his boss and he'll do whatever it takes to be like his right hand guy. You know what I mean? Ride or die. But Dwight, Dwight is a great character. Like there's nobody else on TV that like is, is Dwight. I think my favorite parts altogether are when Jim fucks with Dwight. Cause the other, the other um, memory that I had that I wanted to say was uh, one of my favorites is when he puts change in Dwight's phone and makes it heavier and heavier. <laughs> yes. and he oh my god! And hits himself in the face. Yeah, he just he punches himself in the face so hard, so hard. 
Oh, he just like picks up so the good. phone and he's just whack. Like, yo, yeah. that shit was hilarious. <laughs> or or the mint scene where where every yes. time the computer would ding, yeah. the yeah. Cam would hand yeah. him a mint, yep. and then one day he's just holding out his hand and she's like, What are you what doing? Are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, or I don't know. Or when Jim wraps his desk in, in uh wrapping paper, yeah. and he's like, I'll have this tearing apart in one minute. <laughs> and then he lays his suitcase down on the yeah. desk and it just collapses because there's nothing there. Hilarious. Yeah. Jim had my boys die in the other day because we just have the office randomly playing in the house. At any given time, it's on. So um, it was the episode where it, it starts out. Jim's on or not Jim. Dwight's on the exercise ball and he's bouncing up and down <laughs> telling Jim about all the health benefits of this exercise ball. <laughs> better stamina, better sex, you know, and all this kind of shit. And he's just annoying the hell out of Jim. And Jim goes, how much is that ball? And he goes, it's only like 25 bucks. And he goes, all right, cool. He grabs a pair of scissors and walks over and stabs the ball and pops it. And Dwight just smacks the ground. <laughs> My boys saw that and they were dying. <laughs> hysterically laughing. That's too funny. I got something next level for you. I read an article that was like, do you think Pam is actually a terrible person? And the reason they said that is like, how effed up is it that she was with, was it Roy? Yeah, Roy. But was like feeling Jim the whole time and like wanting Jim to like her, even though she was with somebody else. And, and I forget all of them, but they gave all these examples. And when I read it, I was like, holy crap, Pam is actually a terrible person. The one of the examples they gave was when they were on the booze cruise and Roy says, well, let's get married right now. And she says, I don't want to get married on a boat and my family's not here. In reality, she got married on a boat and her family wasn't there in Niagara Falls. <laughs> yep. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I don't know. See, my but whole no, thing. She's not a bitch. My thing. Yeah, I don't think Pam's a bitch. I think that like her and Jim like definitely started off as friends only. Like, I don't think that like I, to me, it was Roy's fault because he just he, Roy was a dick. Roy was a pussy. I mean, yeah. let's be serious. But no, I'm. Pam, she was very loyal to him. She was. And she actually gave him a second chance. She did. But she never did anything that was like too above and beyond. Yeah, no, you true. Know, that's true too. While she was with Roy. There wasn't any weird scenes where they were like out at like a, I forget there was like an event at a restaurant and she no, got it, drunk. It, and no, it was, Jim uh, drove her it was home the casino night. Was, that was, no, that was uh, the Dundies. It was the, the Dundies. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where she got drunk and she won an award. And as she was running back to the table, she kissed Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Well, didn't she at the casino night? Wasn't she with Roy when they went upstairs and kissed? She was with Roy. Um, Jim confessed his love to her outside in a parking lot. And she said, what are you doing? I'm getting married. And she completely shoots him down. And then he follows her back up into the office, confronts her in the office, and that's when he kisses her. While she's with Roy. That was Jim that did that. Hmm. I don't know. But um, Don't you dare call Pam a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> We're going on a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Another great moment uh, to me is when Jim puts all of Dwight's stuff in the vending machine. Oh, and gives him a <laughs> fucking bag of nickels. Yeah, a bag of nickels to get it. <laughs> Um, But one thing that happens in the show that kind of like, because throughout the whole thing, it's great how like uh, Dwight and Jim's relationship uh, goes throughout the whole thing, which is mostly Jim fucking with Dwight, right? But the one episode, I don't remember what season it's in, but it's Mm -hmm. it's snowing. Makes Jim look like a bitch. A bitch with the snowmen. Yeah. He he builds snowmen all throughout the parking lot. And he's like... Jim comes out at the end of the day and like he knows Dwight is going to get him or he's like going to try to get him and he walks out and there's just snowmen everywhere and like he doesn't know where Dwight is and he's like looking around looking around looking around and like Dwight trashes him right he Dude, like gets annihilates, out and annihilates him. him like Jim was curled up in a ball yeah he was he was that, made and Jim that, look like a bitch that part was pretty great <laughs> yeah, that part was pretty great but uh, no, I was I was kind of surprised though that you guys haven't watched. Well, Kev, you tried watching Parks and Rec. Right? Yeah, I How far do not. I, I watched one episode. I, one episode. I, I went into it knowing I don't like that chick. I don't even know what her name is. The blonde in uh, Parks and Rec. I know her name in the show is Leslie. Amy. Nope. Amy, Amy Poehler. Poehler. I don't like her. 
Could do without her. Not a fan. Not a fan. Huh. She's doing her thing. She's making her money. I applaud that, but I'm not a fan. There's a lot of other really great characters in that show. Huh? Too bad. <laughs> I could do without. Danny, you've never watched an episode, correct? Never. You should check it out. I may. It's 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 definitely <laughs> he's not the office. He's no, gonna see, turn it. He's well, gonna turn it on. He's going uh, uh, I'm gonna watch the office. Instead. My problem is like uh, it just happened today. We put Summer down for a nap, and I said, "Yeah, I'm gonna sit down on a recliner. I'm gonna put something on." So I'm scrolling through Netflix looking for something, and for some reason, every time I hit OK, the office just turns on, <laughs> and I can't turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> now, I did try to watch a few things. There is one thing that I saw on Netflix. We talked about it on the show. Remember that fire festival? Yeah, yeah, with Ja Rule. Or, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. there's a documentary about it on Netflix now. Is there? Did you watch it? I started watching it, but I started falling asleep, so I turned it off because I actually want to watch it and pay attention. Yeah. I watched them both. I watched the Netflix and the Hulu, and the Hulu one. Hulu one. Yeah. How was the Netflix one? Crazy. Was it? Okay. It's good. I, I need to yeah, check it out. Yeah, it's real good. Have you seen the meme that's come from it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the biggest scene probably in it. I Which, don't think I've seen that meme. About the, yeah, don't even tell. Yeah, no. But, but watch um, it. It's it, it blew my mind. I had no idea it was as deep as it was. Okay. It's what real is crazy. This? It was the Fire Festival. It was supposed to have a whole bunch of A-list celebrities and bands playing, and they were selling all these tickets. Well, when they got there... They literally had tents outside. No festival, nothing. Wow. And there was a whole backstory why the guy did this for the money or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was all fraud. Was all wow. Fraud. Yeah, it was all, all fake. And Ja Rule was like one of the co-founders of it. Uh, yeah. He was like an invest. Like apparently he was involved yeah. somehow, but it was, I don't think he was like a founder. I think that like they hit him up for money. Like He okay. was going to finance some of it. I think i'm not 100 percent. watch it because it tells you all that stuff and and how deep they are involved and they wanted to hire him to do something right so they created this website the fire website where you can go and you can hire celebrities to do events correct yeah yeah that's what the fire app is okay and that's that's where i stopped watching yep so i'm not too far in but we started watching the ted bundy tapes on Netflix. how's that it's pretty interesting the guy that guy's nuts man the whole deal with it is is crazy, but one thing we did watch it's not a it's not a series, but we it's on Netflix. Uh, Abducted in plain sight. What's that about? It was one of the craziest things we've watched recently, and it's a documentary uh, about this family that in the seventies. This guy, <laughs> this guy, I don't I don't even know how to explain it, but he basically had an affair with the wife and the husband and they didn't know about it at first but all of it was to get closer to their like 12 year old daughter he was like in love with their 12 year old daughter huh and like he but he like gained their trust and then slash like it, it, somewhere in there like you know kind of start blackmailing them and all this shit and it was all in an effort to get to this girl, their their daughter. Like he he kidnapped her like twice. And he eventually married her in Mexico. But he like brainwashed this girl. Like really, really crazy stuff. And like they go they they the parent both parents and the girl are are alive and they like take you through this whole thing. That's you know crazy. The girl who got abducted yeah. and married the dude and all this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But like he did it in such a way like she was so young and like the times were so different back then. Sure. Obviously, He like he made her believe that like they were abducted by aliens and like what? aliens were going to come and destroy the world. And she had to do all, you know, different things, including having sex with him in order to like save the world and all this shit dude whoa and it's like really nuts like it was really nuts and the guy barely did any jail time like throughout his life cuz at some point she she got older like she turned 16 and he like kind of stopped messing with her you know stopped messing with the family and all this shit and like 
years and years later, like she kind of figured out like, all right, well, this is what actually happened to me. And uh, obviously it's not right. And her and her mom like wrote, wrote a book about it and all this different shit. And it was re- watch it, dude. It's really nuts. It's kind of, it's, it's really disturbing, but it's like really crazy. Too, What's it called again? Uh, abducted in plain sight. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Wow. Watch w- tag first though, John. Okay. Uh, I watched a show over the, the week since the last episode or since might be news last episode. Trigger warning. Oh, did you check that out? Dude, that was good. Yeah. That was really good. Did you watch all of all six episodes? Yeah. 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 yeah it was good. Uh, I, no, I didn't finish the not kill your master. Uh, the, the one with uh, the book of sleep. Yeah, yeah. I okay. didn't watch that. I didn't finish that one. But okay. I watched all the other ones, and it's good. I mean, I thought provoking, right? Yeah, but absolutely. still funny though. But I, it, it really actually turned me on to Killer Mike. Like I really dig Killer Mike and his thoughts and how he just goes about every day. Right. I dig him. See, some people think that like his ideas kind of border racism. Ah. Eh. But like to me. It's it's not racism. It's it's him trying to make the the black community better. Right. Like that's what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like a lot of his ideas to me are like really really great. Right. Like great. Anybody everybody should check out Trigger Warning. It's pretty wild. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to CJ. Um, his late or um yeah his late review for when he filled in for me last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no idea that Weezer had an entire cover al- album out. It's really good, it's right? Phenomenal. Yeah, I've been it's listening like really to it too. Good. I haven't <laughs> been able to stop listening to it. It's really good. I've probably listened to it cover to cover four times already. Dude, they nail it. Like all the songs, incredible. they nail it. Incredible. They, it's good. When they cover Black Sabbath, like he, they put the uh, effects on his voice and stuff to kind of make him sound like Ozzy and stuff. Yeah. Like, they did a really good job with that album. Really so, good job. Shout out to CJ for uh, mm-hmm. let, letting us know about that. That's an awesome album. Yeah. Awesome. It was, it was really good. Uh, I got a, a Netflix thing that I saw that I want to tell you guys about. I, I don't know if you guys have seen it. The Push, it's called, by uh, by Darren Brown. No. I'm, I saw it, and it completely blew my mind. But uh, the guy's like a mentalist, and he does like, um, like he, he can like, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, read put, people's put people minds. in a trance and shit like that. Okay. Uh, uh, hypnotism, hypnotism and stuff, hypnotism. right? Yep. Okay. So, so he does these uh, these different social uh, social experiments, and this one in particular was. Is this documentary style? Kind of. It, it's like it's almost like a prank show, but the guy has no idea he's on a prank show, but okay. it's really serious. So the whole thing is set up really well. The guy thinks he's there to meet people, and there's a business opportunity and stuff. And they start small, and they're like, "Hey." Can you grab that bag over there and carry it for me while we do this and we do that? And then he's like, hey, there's these, um, you know, this food out on a plate, but the vegetarian stuff didn't come. So let's take the meat stuff and put it on the vegetarian plate and put vegetarian flags in it. So people think that it is and and like little things like that. And you get the guy to, to agree to it and it just keeps leveling up more and more until it gets to the point. Would you push somebody like off of a building and kill somebody. Like, can you convince somebody through little things like this to actually commit murder? And it is the wildest thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Shit. Is it a show? It's it's a Netflix special. <laughs> it's like an hour, an oh, okay. hour and a half long. Okay. That sounds interesting. Dude, it's crazy. He has like three specials out on Netflix. I'm going to okay. go home and watch it. Dude, it's nuts. I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. Huh. I'm going I'm to go home and watch it. Kev, have you watched any more Happy? No, I have not. No, I haven't watched any more happy because I was watching fucking trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should finish happy. As soon as and then know. I watched I watched a movie this week. I what? watched a movie. What did you watch? Uh, Dawn of the Dead. Oh, the original yeah. like uh, it's the it was the remake of like 2003 okay. or whenever it was. Yeah. Um, With the zombies in the mall. Dude. Yeah. Crazy. That's I love movie. zombie movies, but ugh. What's your favorite zombie movie? Favorite zombie movie? Probably I Am Legend. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Have you seen World War Z? Yeah, with Brad Pitt. I, I liked it. I just, I, 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 I am a huge fan of Will Smith. Yeah. The thing that scared me about World War Z, 
you know, I'd be cool if we had the zombie apocalypse. You know, I think I could hold my own. But if the, the World War Z zombies were the fucking like lightning, <laughs> fuck that. Done. <laughs> I'll be in the corner, Taylor, pooping our pants. <laughs> Done. I, uh, first of all, both I Am Legend is a movie that I, I just like won't watch anymore. Like, I've seen it enough. I've seen it a couple times. I'm just like, okay, I know how this ends. I'm good. It's that scary to me. <laughs> Like it's not it's not because it's not a good movie. It's just because it actually, it absolutely terrifies me. Well, see, I turn it off because I don't want to see Will Smith choke his dog out in the bathroom. Yeah, I don't like that. Part. That kills me. Makes me very upset. And when he goes inside and finds the dog, you know what I mean? Like when he's running and trying to find yeah. it, and he goes inside during the day, and they're all like, "Yo, oh, that man. scene! Oh my god, yeah, it's <laughs> fucking scary." <laughs> scares the shit out of me otherwise i kind of like the idea of the movie like i like how he's by himself and like everything's overgrown and it's pretty cool like that but like no i i won't watch i am legend now and there was a there was a um uh what the hell was it it's uh what the hell is it called uh foreseeing for another movie in that in that movie you remember the billboard for uh batman versus superman or whatever it is yep yep so yeah I did like World War Z though. That was wild. I liked it because it was a different take on the whole thing. Yep. And like the zombies were super fast, like you were saying, which was wild. Yeah, like if you look at the zombies from The Walking Dead compared yeah. to the zombies from World War Z. They literally call them walkers because yeah. they're slow as shit. I am legend they're fast as shit. Fast. Yeah. But they can't be out in the daylight, right? Right. Right, exactly. These in World War Z. Yeah, they're all they're over. They're just the fucking taken place. over. They instantly made that fucking that wall. They, yeah, they, they scaled that wall in like four seconds. Well, see, to me, like World War Z is almost like more of an action movie. There's not like very many parts that like make you jump, or it's not like scary. It's suspenseful, sure, but like I would say, I guess the the like, scariest part is when they're in the, like it's dark and they're like in the airport or not the airport but on the airfield or whatever that part's kind of crazy but like i am legend is way more to me anyway like scary it's intense very intense i see what you're saying you know like world war z was like almost like a war movie yeah like it it ended up being that pretty much um i enjoyed that though like i like the the beginning like you see how it all starts and like Mm -hmm. first of all in there in philly when it happens which is crazy yeah um so yeah, I don't know. I, I would probably. I'm not a zombie fan at all. Zero percent. You would never. You you wouldn't watch I Am Legend at nighttime by yourself. Zero percent chance. <laughs> Listen, I wouldn't watch I Am Legend broad daylight right now. It just wouldn't happen. I've seen it. I've seen enough. It's, it's one of those movies though where if it's on and I'm scrolling through the channels, I'm, I'm gonna stop it. and watch yeah. it, and then I'm gonna turn it off right before the end. <laughs> I won't even read the whole title, and I'll be over, I'll be past it. Uh, I am sorry. Gone. <laughs> I, I am watching on. something else. <laughs> <laughs> I am not watching this shit. <laughs> what about you guys? You guys got a favorite zombie movie? I would say it's probably I Am Legend. I can't think of anything better. I like Zombie Land. Zombie Land is great. Good. Yeah. They're coming out with the second one too. Are they really? Yeah. Woody uh, Harrelson called Double Tap. Yeah, the whole original cast. Is coming oh, back. nice. Yeah. Yeah. They had like a, they did because everybody was doing the 10 year challenge or whatever. They put the first movie poster next to the new one. That's how they reviewed, revealed oh, yeah, the new yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. It's called Double Tap or something. Zombie Land Double Tap or something. But yeah, all of them are in it. That movie was great. When they killed Bill Murray, that shit was hilarious. Dude, I, that, that bothered me. I, I felt so bad. I was, I, was really like, ups- I was so upset about it. I was like really upset about it too. <laughs> yeah. But like, the reason he did it, he was like just d- dressing up like zombies and going out just and playing case, golf and yeah. shit. Like just hanging out. <laughs> Dude, so gangster. So good. <laughs> and then they, he just like shows up and they shoot him. And I was like, fuck. Like, yeah, he, he just showed up. <laughs> Woody Harrelson gets so mad. He's like, we just killed Bill, Bill Murray. <laughs> fuck Dude, what a crazy movie i love like the beginning of it when he's just like telling you what you need to survive and he's like cardio yeah. and he's yep. just like running around this parking yeah. lot just like running like, yeah. just, like he drops his keys trying to get his car he's like shit he just starts running in another yeah. circle dude what a great movie yeah that's a good one see if like zombies were like that like i, I of course i'd be terrified still but like I, I wouldn't be as terrified if it was like a walking dead situation like these fucking little, you know, these zombies just kind of creeping around. Kick him in the head and keep on moving. You know, not very fast at all. 
I'm not very fast, but You'd I'm definitely chilling. faster than that. Yeah, I'd You'd be, be chilling. I'd be chilling. But I am legend in fucking World War Z. You're done. Done. So all the way done. <laughs> all the way done. Like instantaneously. First of all, I can't run fast at all. <laughs> and okay? when you do, you look like a weirdo. I look like a fucking weirdo <laughs> when I try to run really fast. <laughs> <laughs> was it you and me who raced we raced a long time ago kev was it me and you i'm trying to remember so. i raced somebody because i was like yeah i'm fast <laughs> and we like raced and they like smoked me and i was like ah oh, lucky <laughs> gonna tie my shoe better or something <laughs> not fast at all but uh anyway great show today guys Thanks. it was fun taking over relatable radio i felt relatable it was very relatable somebody likes the office I hope so. I'm sure plenty of people pee in the shower. <laughs> or put their deodorant on <laughs> before they put their shirt on. <laughs> well, this has been Relatable Radio. We are the Might Be News guys, though. Uh, it's Takeover Week. John, Nathan, thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, uh, Kev, another great job by you. Dude, I had no oper- or no other option. He couldn't fuck it up if he tried. <laughs> Danny, great job. Thank you. You did a good job as well. Thank you. If you guys uh, like us and never listen to Might Be News, go check us out. We're on every Monday. com. Every Monday. And hopefully uh, the people who listen to Might Be News and nothing else, check this show out as well. Uh, the ladies did a great job doing Might Be News. Uh, so definitely check that out. And uh, again, make sure you check out an all new episode of Might Be Sports coming up tomorrow. New Novak and Franz uh, exclusive Might Be Brews episode, major, major stuff. And uh, an all new Might Be Tunes as well. Very busy, very busy at the Might Be News Network. Doing a great job. I'm Taylor Cooper. This is Relatable Radio. Bye. 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 Bye.